Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing the case of Martha Moxley or Moxley. This case was recently suggested by one of you guys. Thank you. Martha Elizabeth Moxley was only 15 years old when she was murdered. Martha was born on August 16th, 1960 and was an American high school student from Greenwich, Connecticut. So it was the evening of October 30th, 1975. This was the night before Halloween, which was called Mischief Night back then, I know. Now I think it's called like Devil's Night, where people go and do mischievous things <laughs> to like other people's houses and stuff. Or like, you know, ding dong ditch people or, you know, stuff like that on the night before Halloween. And so she went out to have some fun with her friends. They started to toilet paper some houses and they were just having a really great time. There was a boy there named Thomas Sackle who Martha had a little bit of a crush on. She was flirting with him that night and actually ended up kissing him later that night. Now, she didn't know it yet, but this boy's brother would end up murdering her. Martha was last seen in the Skackles' backyard at about 9.30 p.m. that night, and she was with Thomas. And she lived very close to this house. And so the following morning, the morning of Halloween, her body was found under a tree in her own backyard. Now, her pants and her underwear had both been pulled down, but it is important to note that she was not sexually assaulted. Near her body, there were pieces of a golf club, which seemed to have been the murder weapon. An autopsy showed that she had been both bludgeoned and stabbed with the golf club. And this golf club was able to be traced back to the Skakel home. So Thomas Skakel was the last person to be seen with Martha on the night of her murder and he had a pretty weak alibi. So he ended up becoming the prime suspect because he was the last person to see her, but his father was very against the police doing a lot of investigation. So he had his son's mental health records and school records completely sealed. There was a live-in tutor at the Skakel home named Kenneth and Kenneth Littleton was was also a prime suspect in this case because he started working at the Skackles family's house for the first time ever just a few hours before Martha was killed. But no one was charged and for decades and decades no one had any idea what happened. Books have been made about the case both fiction and non-fiction. It's just been it's been a really interesting topic for a lot of true crime enthusiasts. Interestingly enough both of the brothers of the Skackle family, so remember Thomas was the last one to be seen with Martha. Him and his brother both had very interesting stories that kept changing over time. Michael claimed that he was looking into a nearby window and touching himself in a tree by Martha Moxley's house from about 11.30 p.m. to 12.20 a.m. But interestingly enough, two people actually confessed to overhearing Michael say that he killed Martha. Now, I didn't get into this yet, but the Skackles are actually related to the Kennedys. And yes, I mean like John F. Kennedy Kennedy. The Skackle brothers are the nephews of a woman named Ethel Skackle Kennedy, and she was married to Robert F. Kennedy. So a guy named Gregory Coleman testified that he overheard Michael specifically say that he had special privileges and I'm gonna get away with murder. I'm a Kennedy. So someone in the family, but not too close to the family, named William Kennedy Smith was tried and acquitted for rape in the year 1991, but it somehow came out during the investigation or the court hearings, I can't remember, that he might have been at the house on the night of the Moxley murder. He might have been visiting the Skackles. So he might have been involved. So this really had no evidence to base this off of, but it completely inspired the police to reopen this cold case. So after 18 months of investigation, police decided that they finally had enough evidence to charge Michael Skackle with murder. And interestingly enough, on January 9th, 2000, a warrant was actually put out for the arrest of an unnamed juvenile who may have been involved with Martha Moxley's murder. And later that day, Michael Skackle decided to surrender himself to a he was released on half a million dollars bail, arraigned in a juvenile court because he was a juvenile at the time of Martha's murder. But on January 31st of 2001, a judge ruled that Skackle would be tried as an adult. His trial began in May of 2002, and his alibi for the night of the murder was that he was at his cousin's house. Now, as I said, he's changed this a bunch of times so far, but now he's sticking with the fact that he was at his cousin's house. Now, during this investigation, the jury overheard the tape um, in which Michael 
confessed to police or he said to police that on the night of her murder he had been in a tree touching himself. Authorities are thinking that that tree could even be the same tree that Martha's body was found under. And that came out during the trial. On June 7th, 2002, Michael Skakel was found guilty of the murder of Martha Moxley and was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. So let's talk a little bit about Michael Skakel, this guy that ended up murdering Martha. He is the middle of seven children and his, and his grandfather was extremely, extremely wealthy. Unfortunately, his mother died two years before the murder and he began abusing alcohol at the age of 13. He flunked out of reportedly a dozen different schools. Apparently he was thought of as a small and sensitive kid and his father was abusive towards him. The Skako children were largely unsupervised while they were growing up and they had free reign to kind of do whatever they wanted. And a couple years after the murder, Skako was actually arrested for drunk driving in the state of New York. Skakel has tried to appeal his conviction multiple times. He's argued for a sentence reduction because he should have been charged in juvenile court, but he lost his bid for that. And he's been denied parole every time that he has asked for it. That is pretty much all that there is out there on the case of Martha Moxley. I hope you guys enjoyed today's case. If there are any you'd like to hear me discuss in the future, please leave them down below and I'll be sure to do that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!